back to our analysts to do just that. Thank you very much, guys. I'm going to start by answering Stress's question. What is three kills or three kills and assists to 12 deaths? It's a 0.25 KDA. Now, let's talk a little bit seriously. Uh, Rocket again, super comfort picks. They had a lack of damage in their team composition, and I personally felt if the game went long, there could have been a risk of Rocket being able to win team fights. It didn't happen, but let's take a look at the team compositions and, and rinse and repeat like you did for game one. Deficio, what do you like and dislike about the two respective teams? Well, if you look at Copenhagen's academy and what they've done once again with this red side, which they decided to be on red side, by the way, whenever they had the chance, the first two picks that came in was Thresh Lucian. You're not taking anything away from Rocket by doing that because you know Urgot is going to be the pick for Woolart anyway, and clearly Wolves Academy doesn't play it. So you don't really gain any advantage by being on that red side. And then the last pick, the Fizz, which is, of course, a counter pick to the Maokai. The problem about Fizz is he's so slow at clearing waves and really setting up a spray push that with all the engage of a Annie, of an Urgot, Maokai, whatever it is, even a Whimsy from a Lulu, will always force a fight on the rest of the members from Wolves Academy while they can see Fizz standing there poking the minions slowly, 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 <laughs> slowly trying to build up that wave and get the spray push going. So it's way too easy for, for Rocket to just read what's about to happen, how much time do we have to react, and because Wolves Academy never forced anything outside of the fist, Rocket just saved up their cooldowns and said, okay, now we got a flash ready on Urgot, let's just flash on Oriana, kill her instantly. And then they would just use that to always dictate the pace of the, of the game. And Wolves Academy just never really had any answers. Yeah, I think that just decisiveness from Rocket and the lack of decisiveness from Komeng Wolves Academy kind of told the story of this game. Um, they had the split push going, they actually had a fist that was really, really strong with 40, 50, yeah. 60 CS ahead easily could have gone for the split push and was stronger than the Maokai. And back then when we played Fizz as well, always pick Fizz into Maokai because at some point you just split push, you out deal DPS so much compared to the Maokai. And then in this game, they just started just grouping up and lost team fights consistently. Yeah, I actually think we've got a replay of one of those lost team fights. It's about 19 minutes into the game. Rocket already had built themselves up a lead, but this is just a... A well-executed fight from Rocket. Well, and also Morso has no reason to be here with the team. Let's just look at the fighting we talk about it after. So it's engaging from overpower, big tank in Maokai. He's where he wants to be. Maokai wants to team fight. Fizz wants to split push. So Morso has no impact in this fight. And despite a good shockwave from Cos Q, this is not enough damage on an early game or there's just no follow-up as well. No follow-up deck. Your whole composition as well needed more time to scale up before you could really take fights like this. You're doing it straight into an Urgot who's sitting on Brutalize and Mana Muni at, at this point here. You're sitting against a Lulu, which is so strong in the mid game. So you're playing into the hands of Rocket. And you're also having, like, you have this, we got a strong split pusher, they got a strong team fighter. Let's not go into team fight then, because the top wave here was open for Wolves Academy to just have that fist sitting here, TP and everything, pushing that wave, force the Maokai to sit against you and, and, and basically do nothing. Instead, Early team fights set you even further behind, and Rocket is just honestly on cruise control. Let's let's talk about Copenhagen Wolves Academy for a moment because we did mention they actually don't have a coach with them here, whereas uh, the other teams do. You can actually see the team backstage chatting and trying to break down the game. You know, we're seeing picks and bans, errors, mistakes. We're seeing uh, team-based decisions going awry in game. This is a team that you know did very well during the, the regular season of Challenger. And now, since getting to playoffs and, and losing to Origin, they seem to be losing their way um, more so than they were earlier in the split. Yeah, I think that right now they should pull themselves together and be more decisive. Um, I don't know what he did on the phone there, but you should have somebody to talk to here, to cheer you up, to show you the strengths. I honestly think just for Wolves Academy, they have some very, very good players. It's what we talked about at the start of this, uh, this match here, how it's very much a solo queue team Five guys coming together, don't have a gaming house, don't really seem to have, you know, the whole infrastructure we see from, from some of the other teams. And whenever they've now faced Origin, who's a team who's obviously very serious, have that gaming house and has prepared a lot of things, Rocket is the same here. It looks like when they face teams that has some sort of strategy or answers to this strong individual play, it's very hard for Wolves Academy to do anything. But we still got to give them that credit that player for player, they are very, very good. Like, Morso and that Fizz got a few early kills. So the start of the game, where it was just standard lanes, they swapped around, so they countered the swap in top end to get the Fizz one-on-one. -on -one. Like, that was great. 
It's just whenever Rocket makes a move, Wolves Academy doesn't know how to react in time, and that's why they keep falling behind. It was the same versus Origin. Well, they've got one more chance to keep their hopes alive. We'll see whether or not Copenhagen Wolves have found a magic strategy on their phone and whatever prep they had. Before we get to that game, though, let's take a look at what you guys have been saying over in the Twitter sphere. Earlier today, we asked you which promotion tournament team do you think has the most potential to impact the LCS summer split and why? We picked one more tweet that we'd like to talk about. This comes from at Kittil, uh, wrote in, hashtag rock win for sure. If Nukta gets his confidence back, everybody should watch out for Rocket. And he's not been playing Assassins like we used to uh, see him on like his namesake, but his Lulu has been particularly strong in these two games. Yeah, it's been very, very good. He's done everything he needed to good poke coming in and of course the whole team fighting you can do when you have these beefy tanks like even an Urquhart and then Lulu just buffing them up. So I like the comp they're running and they can keep doing it because it looks like that's not the kind of style that Wolves Academy wants to play and that's working really well. Yeah, I think it was not too flashy, but he was consistently dealing DPS, was sure. taking people up. Was it the right position at the right time and exactly that's what you want from a Lulu just because it's not insta killing people doesn't mean that he doesn't do a great job I think he played really well this series well definitely showing out rock at one game away from being back in the LCS thank you so much to everybody at home for writing in remember we are always listening over at at LOL esports if you need to talk always include that hashtag LCS so we on the desk can actually read what you have to say for now we do need to head back to another break but when we return we'll see whether the rock cat is out of the bag or if the wolves refuse to be tamed Seminars. 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 To Don't talk, please. Oh, well, there he goes. Oh, hyperconnect position reversal, but all of a sudden, there is a giant Poro Rider there, ignoring Vander as Hyper tries to tank up the damage that picks up the kill. Nuketuck on the right. Knock There's up. the knockup out to the flash, and Nuketuck, they're going to even the odds here. Hyper trying to stay alive, but he'll go down. That TP, that TP. Run, run, okay. run, run, run away from tower. Run, run here. Yeah, we can still fight this. I have ulti, I have ulti. Focus this, I think. We killed them all, we killed them all, guys. Tower, 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 Urgo tower. Lula Master. Nice. Yanko still pushing forward. Vazility just doesn't have any damage, and Yanko's flashes after him. Gets a double kill. That warrior and champ being put to work. It's not even 30 minutes, and Copenhagen Wolves Academy admit defeat in game two.